friends, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Dr. Devika R, Assistant Professor, giving a talk on the topic Measures of Central Tendency, Arithmetic Mean and Mode. Introduction. Let us begin with the introduction about Measures of Central Tendency. As you all know, Measures of Central Tendency is used as a statistical measure which can be used for representing a score. Also, measures of central tendency represents an entire distribution. Now, you would have seen the words central tendency and central tendency. Central tendency means the tendency of the given scores to centralize to one particular point. For example, Consider the marks of all your students in an examination. Once you correct the answer sheets, did you notice something peculiar about the scores? Yes, very few students score high marks, very few students score low marks and majority marks of the students lie between highest and lowest. This tendency of the group about distribution is called central tendency. Or in other words, we can say central tendency is the typical score lying between the extreme scores. It is also shared by most of the students. Now, we will give two definitions for central tendency. According to Tate 1955, central tendency is a sort of average or typical value of the items in the series and its function is to summarize the series in terms of average value. In another definition that is given by Upadhyaya and Singh in the year 2007, central tendency is a typical score lying between the extremes and shared by most of the students. The goal of central tendency to find that single score which is most typical or representative of the whole group. The next topic is different measures of central tendency. The three different measures of central tendency are the first one arithmetic mean, second one median and third one mode. And in this session I will be speaking about arithmetic mean and mode. Now arithmetic mean it is denoted by the letter capital M. It is the simplest and most useful measure of central tendency. We can denote arithmetic mean by the letter M. It is commonly known as average. Definition for mean. Mean can be defined as the sum of all the scores in the series divided by total number of scores. Mean can be calculated in three different situations. First one. It can be calculated for the ungrouped data. Second, it can be calculated for ungrouped frequency distribution. And in the final case, mean can be calculated for a grouped data, which means you are given a frequency distribution and we need to find the arithmetic mean. Now, case one, if we have a ungrouped data with us, how to find the mean? Suppose that x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, x8, x9 and x10 represent the scores obtained by 10 students in an examination. How will you determine the mean of scores in such a case? As discussed above, mean is calculated by finding the sum of scores. Second thing, divide the given score by total number of scores. Thus, mean is calculated by adding all the scores and then divided by the total number of scores. In this case, mean is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 plus x6 plus x7 plus x8 plus x9 plus x10 divided by 10. In general, if x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, etc. up to xn represent the scores of n students, 
mean is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 plus etc up to xn divided by n. As an example, let us take the Indian cricket team captain scored 75, 80, 45, 100 and 69 in the series against New Zealand. Calculate the mean score. Step 1. The formula for determining mean is mean is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 etc up to xn divided by n. Step 2. Find out the sum of scores and in this case sum of scores is equal to 75 plus 80 plus 45 plus 100 plus 69 equals 369. Total number of scores n is equal to 5 thus applying the formula mean is equal to 369 divided by 5 equals 73.80. Now second case if we are given a ungrouped frequency distribution how to calculate the mean. Consider the example given below time spent for studying per week and the number of students are given in a tabular form. Three students spends 15 hours for studying, another three spends 30 hours for studying, six spends 13 hours for studying and eight student spends 10 hours for studying. In this case we will write the given data in a tabular column which consists of three columns. The first column will be written as time spent and it is denoted by the variable x. Number of students will be represented by the variable f and in the third column we need to find the product of number of students and time spent. That is why in the third column it is given as 15 into 5 equals 75. For the second column f into x becomes 20 into 3 is 60. For the third row the f into x becomes 13 into 6 equals 78 and in the fourth row it becomes 10 into 8 equals 80. And next step we need to count down the total number of students that is represented by sigma f equals 22. All the fx products are summated to find the sum that is sigma fx equals 293. Once again the first step is to find sum of all the fx which is sigma fx thus sigma fx equals 293 total number of students equals 5 plus 3 plus 6 plus 8. Mean is calculated by the formula mean is equal to sigma fx divided by sigma f equals 293 divided by 22 equals 13.62. Now the third case mean of grouped data. Here also mean is calculated by the formula mean is equal to sigma fx divided by n where the letter f is the frequency, x is the midpoint of each class interval and n equals sigma f. Example, consider this data given in a tabular form. The first column consists of class intervals and the second column consists of number of students. See, in the first row, the class interval is 0 to 5, corresponding to it number of students 8, 5 to 10, corresponding frequency is 11. For the third class interval, 10 to 15, number of students is 15. For the fourth class interval, 15 to 20, it is 12. For the next class interval 20 to 25 number of students is 9 and for the last class interval 25 to 30 number of students is 5. Now while calculating we need to convert the data into a tabular form. The first column time spent per week, second column number of students, third column midpoint which is represented by the letter x and that midpoint is the midpoint of the class interval and the final column we need to find the product of frequency and the midpoint. Now while calculating midpoint it comes down as like this 0 to 5 the midpoint is 2.5, 5 to 10 the midpoint is 7.5, 10 to 15 the midpoint is 12.5, 15 to 20 
17.5, 20 to 25, 22.5, and for the final class interval, midpoint is 27.5. Now, F and X should be multiplied for each of the class interval. The product should be written there. And finally, add up or summate all the F into X so that sigma FX will be 840. Also, the number of students should be summated so that we'll get sigma F or capital N. And in this case, 8 plus 11 plus 15 plus 12 plus 9 plus 5 equals 60. Thus, applying the formula mean is equal to sigma fx by n equals 840 divided by 60 equals 14. Thus, it can be seen that mean time spent by the students for watching mobile is 14 hours. Now, we have come to the end of the first measure of central tendency that is arithmetic mean and I will do with the second measure of central tendency, that is mode. Now imagine a situation where a shopkeeper is looking for the flavor, which is most demanded by the customers. The first row is the name of the ice cream flavors are given, and in the second row, the number of items sold in a month. So the flavor vanilla is required, sorry, the flavor vanilla is demanded by 18 people, chocolate 35, mango 26, strawberry is opted by 30 people and pista flavor by 8 people. Mode, the number 35 represents the whole data and this representative value is called mode. Thus, mode of a set of scores is that value which occurs most often. Definition, mode is that score which occurs most frequently in a distribution. Now, let us look at example one. The scores of students in an examination is given as 25, 29, 24, 25, 27, 25, 28, 25 and 29. Find the mode or the model value. Now, what we have to do is arrange the scores such that same score come together. So we'll write as 24, 25, 25, 25, 27, 28, 29, 29. Now find out the occurrence for each score. We can see here that the score 24 comes only once, 25 occurs four times, 27 occurs once, 28 occurs once, and 29 occurs twice. Now find out which score repeats or occurs most frequently. We can see that 25 is the score which is repeatedly most often in this example. Thus, mode equals 25. Or we can say that the model value of the set of scores is 25. Now, consider another example. The mark scored by students and the number of students is given here. The score 10 is obtained by 3 students, 12 by 4 students, the score 13 is scored by 5 students, 15 by 2 students, 18 by 5 students, 19 by 2 students, and 20 by 1 student. Observing very closely, we can see that the two scores 13 and 18 are scored by five students each. So which one is the mode in this case? Here, two model values are there, 13 and 18. Thus, we should understand that a distribution can have more than one mode or multiple modes. Now, there is another way to find mode. If we are given median and mean, mode can be calculated using the formula 3 into median minus 2 into mean. And this formula can be applied only when median and mean are known. Example, the mean and median of a distribution are given as 44.6 and 44.05 respectively. Compute the mode. As we have seen here, 
mode is equal to 3 into median minus 2 into mean equals 3 into 44.05 minus 2 into 44.6 equals 132.15 minus 42.95 and that equals 42.95. Now conclusion, in this session we have seen central tendency as we all know central tendency is the tendency of the given scores to centralized to a one particular point. Now there are three types of central tendency. The first one is arithmetic mean or simply we can say mean. Second one is median and mode. Calculation of the mean can be done in three situations. First one, when the data is ungrouped. Second one, the ungrouped frequency distribution is given. And in the third case, all the data are grouped into class intervals. Now, mode is the score that occurs most frequently in a distribution. Mode can also be calculated by using the formula mode is equal to 3 median minus 2 mean. But one thing to remember is that mean and median should be directly given in the question so that mode can be calculated. Thank you. That's all in this session. Thank you once again.